Hey everyone, Professor Hank here. And today we're gonna look at how you can test characters to see what type they are. We'll do this by using a select set of functions that are defined in the CC type header file. So let's go ahead and get started. And the way these functions work, they all kind of work the same, is you pass them an individual character. So one argument, one character, can't be a string, they just have to be individual characters because that's what these functions do. They test characters. And then it'll return true if it's that type of character or false otherwise. So the first one we'll look at is we'll look at is alpha, right? And so this is going to return true if the character argument is an alphabetic character. So uh, something like, you know, A through Z. What we can do is we can do something like this. We can say um, is alpha and then pass it, say, Z, right? And then if that's true, then we'll go ahead and uh, print out, um, you know, it's alphabetic, right? Otherwise, we'll print out nothing. So we'll say is, uh, is alphabetic, okay? Otherwise, see how it's not alphabetic. Okay, so we can do that. And then when we run this, you're gonna see that it's gonna say it's alphabetic because he is an alphabetic character, right? Now, if I were to pass it something like um, five, then, you know, we would get a false, right? Because a five is a digit, it's not an alphabetic character. All right, so next up, let's go ahead and take a look at is alphanumeric, is alnum. So this is true if we have um, characters A through Z or characters 0 through 9. So it's testing your character to see if it's alphabetic or if it's a digit. So we can do something like this, see out um, it, and then we'll do a little ternary operator here, we'll say is alnum, and we'll pass it the character three, all right? And if that's true, then we'll say is, right? Otherwise, if that's false, then we'll say is not, okay? And then uh, alphanumeric, I'll just say alnum. Okay, so let's go ahead and test that. So it is alphanumeric, that's true, because three is a number. And then let's see, let's see something that wouldn't be alphanumeric. Um, maybe a space, okay? It is not alphanumeric, because if space is not, it's not a character that is in the alphabet and it's not a digit, okay? So let's go on, is digit, guess what? How is digits going to work? Okay, so is digit is true if the argument is a digit. Is digit if zero through nine. Okay, so we'll do is digit here. And then we'll say is a digit. Okay, since that's a space, go ahead and test it. You're gonna see that um, it's not a digit because the space is not a digit, but as soon as I put a single digit in there, right, then it's going to be true. I mean, and that's how all these things work, right? I'll go ahead and go through uh, examples of every single one of them, explain what they are, but, um, you know, you get the, you get the idea. So we've got is lower, right? So is lower is true if lowercase, false otherwise, right? So... It is lower, right? So lowercase is, um, you know, like B, right? Is lower. Is lower. Case. Okay, so lowercase B is lower. So you're going to see it is lowercase. Okay, and then if we did like uppercase C, then you're going to see you know, it is not lowercase. And guess what? We'll skip forward here to is upper. Is upper does the same thing. It just 
tests it for lowercase instead. Okay, so is upper is true if uppercase. So in this case, the Z is going to, that uppercase Z is going to evaluate the true because it is uppercase, right? So you can see that. And then if we made it a lowercase, say C, then it evaluate false. I mean, that's all these functions do is they just test a single character, a single character, not a string of characters, but a single character. I'll show you how to use them to test an entire string here in a second. Okay. Uh, all right. So that's is upper is lower. So like is print, all right? So is print true if it's a printable character? Okay. So what does that mean? You know, characters that can appear on the screen. There's a set of characters that aren't printable. Those are uh, control characters. Okay, so uh, control one, control two, control five, control eight, etc. I think the first 20 control characters are not printable, but everything else is. So these are gonna work the exact same way, right? So is printable. So we just say is print. And this is gonna be true. And let's go ahead and put a little exclamation point in there. How about that? It's going to be true because an exclamation point is printable. It can show up on the screen. Okay. Um, you know, I think backslash B for bell is not a printable character. So, you know, so you can see it is not printable. Okay. So that's another example. Some of the escape sequences are not printable characters. All right, so let's look at is punct and then is space, and then we'll be done. Okay, with these is, and then we'll see an example of a program that, or a functional, write you a function that'll test an entire string, okay? So is punct true if it's uh, punctuation? All right, so you can guess what that's gonna look like or how that's gonna be. Uh, basically, if the character that you pass to this thing is a punctuation character, then it's gonna evaluate the true, false otherwise. So is punct, and then we'll do uh, is punctuation. So what's punctuation? A comma's punctuation, isn't it? We'll find out here in a second when we run this. All right. So yes, it is. A comma is punctuation, um, but a digit is not. So you're going to see that's going to show you it's not punctuation. Okay, and then finally, I think the last one. Uh, is is it space? So is space is basically just um, you know is it is it uh, white space right? So what's white space? A tab hit, hitting the space bar once, enter. Those are uh, white space, right? So if it's white space, if it's white space, so we'll do is space. And then white space, All right? So for example, new line character, that's gonna be true because a new line character is white space. So you can see it right there. You know, if you did tab, that's white space. So it's gonna evaluate true, okay? And then um, of course, if you just had a space by itself, it's gonna be white space, okay? So that's how those work. Any others that we're going to look at? Nope, that's everything. So let's write ourselves a function now that uses some of these um, to do something somewhat interesting. Okay. So how about, how about we write a function, write a function that counts how many um, digits are in a string passed to it. Okay, so we're gonna pass this thing a C string. Um, so we'll call this foo. And C strings are constant character pointers. So we need to do that and we'll pass it the size because we'll have a loop that's going to loop through every single individual character in the C string and then count if it's a digit, all right? And then uh, we'll display that on the screen and we'll count how many digits there are and 
um, how many uppercase there is. How many digits, how many uppercase and lowercase. And lowercase, All right? So let's do that. So we'll need a loop. Equal zero, I less than size. Okay. And then um, I plus plus. And we're going to need a variable, some counters here. So we'll say digits, uppercase, and lowercase. All right. So then we'll just have a bunch of statements. So if is digit string of I, then uh, digits plus plus. If um, is raise, 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 Okay, so this will tell us how many of each of these are in the um, string that gets passed. You know what? I also want to do alpha too. We'll do is alpha here too. Is alpha. All right, so we'll do alpha equals zero. And then we'll do if is alpha. And then we'll do uh, alpha plus plus. Okay, so we'll just have a little see out statement here. See out digits. All right. See out. And then we have alpha. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this. So we'll call our function foo, and then we'll pass it. Uh, Hello, eight, six, seven. Nope, there's eight characters here. So, and actually there's gonna be nine because of the null terminator in that C string, right? So let's put that argument there and then we'll call this and we will see how many of each characters is in here. Okay, so he says, so what do we got? It says uh, digits are three and we know that's true because there's eight, six and the seven. There's one uppercase, uppercase H, lowercase, there's four of them, E-L-L-O. And then alphabetic characters, there's five, H-E-L-L-O. Um, if you want to do this with actual string objects, right, a string variable, then we'd have to pound include string. We could just change this to string, okay, and it should work just fine, right? So this will work with strings too, but you have to, you know, go element by element is the big idea, right? Testing each individual character. Okay, so now you know how to test characters in C++. Okay, so that's going to bring this video to a close. If you're a student of mine, you have questions about any of the topics that were covered in this video, feel free to drop me an email, stop by my office hours, or hit me up on Zoom online. For the rest of you, if you thought the video was useful, please consider giving a thumbs up. If you thought the video sucked, you got the thumbs down button as well. Consider supporting the channel in various ways. You can subscribe, you can join as a member with additional perks for as little as 99 cents. Leave a comment, whatever. But most of all, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.